Welcome to the Kiss Kiss Bang Bang New Music Files. We've been expecting you. I'm your host, Uncle Agent 0013 Dead Air Dave, and in each episode, we crack open the dossier on the latest release by an artist. And in this episode, we're going to open up the files on Blue October and their new release, Spinning the Truth Around Part 1. And for the next 20 minutes, we're going to talk to Justin from the band. So you want to get to know me, but you don't really want to get to know me, is what you're saying. Oh, no, we really do want to get to know you. So tell us, what is it we need to know about Okay, you? look at it. These are vintage garbage pail kids. Back in the day, I have them all. I have you them have all. all of them? Yes, I have them all. That is yeah. a full deck. That's a full deck. You know, I keep all the first series, second series, third series, fourth series, fifth series, sixth series in the casa and i don't let anybody touch them but as you can see i like to keep my cards plastic and safe oh man but i've got every one of them just want to say you know i know you're jealous but i'll let you touch them if you ever come over well that is a sweet invitation don't be surprised if i show up uh but uh, this is the kiss kiss bang bang new music files and we want to talk about your new music the album just came out about a week or so ago yeah it's pretty exciting. Quite fresh and new that we have Spinning the Truth Around Part 1 now right. out and available. Uh, part 2 comes out next summer. Yep. You're going to be hitting the road just like in a week. Yeah. So you have tons of things going on uh, musically, and we're going to get to those because that's always the theme of the podcast. But I have to tell you, on top of that, you have a movie out. Oh, God, no, no. We're not going to oh, talk about no. Section 8? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in a movie. Let's just say that I'm yeah. in a movie. I look good. I do good. Yeah. I like to fight good in that movie. And that's all I can say about that movie. Well, I can say one more thing. Uh, if unless uh, I'm seeing this incorrectly, you made the poster. That's, yeah, I mean, that's your, that's your head right there next to the word eight under section eight. Yeah, that's my head, and uh, I look really kind of cool in it because I get to shoot big guns, get to shoot people, and I get to beat people up. And I play a bad guy with an extremely bad attitude who's extremely sarcastic and loves killing people. So sounds, it was sounds, sounds perfect. It was amazing because usually I'm just a big teddy bear, you know. <laughs> uh, but it's my first shot at film. Let's say that. All right. So there's going to be many more, but this was a great. A uh, great opportunity, and uh, I jumped on it, and it was it was great to work alongside of people like Mickey Rourke and right. uh, Dolph Lundgren and and, and Dermot Mulroney. Who, he was the best. Well, I'm glad you said that because your next film coming up, Lights Out, once again teams you up with Dermot Mulroney. He's like my my boy. He he yelled at me on on set, and I'll never forget that. Yeah, I love him for because, it ever since. Because my dumbass was playing with those guns, those fake guns. And I was uh -huh. going, pop, 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 pop. And he said, what are you stupid? You don't point a in gun at anyone, even if it's a fake. And I went, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I think my, uh, my, um, my man parts went inside of me there for a second. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I could see that happening with Dermot Mulroney screaming at you. You know, and then afterwards, he's like, I'm sorry. And I go, no, 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 I needed that. Thank you, sir. And ever since then, every time we have a scene together, he's like, dude, how about you take one of my lines? And I'm like, okay, I'll take <laughs> as right. many lines as you want to give me. Yeah. All right. So it's, good, now. it's a good trade off. Yeah. So you're coming up with uh, Lights Out next year, again with Dermot Mulroney. Are you going to be shooting more guns in that film? Yeah. I'm basically a drug addict who gets beat up by Frank Grillo, who gets shot by Jamie King. In the head, mid sentence. <laughs> oh man, um, they're all picking on you. I love it. I'm like, I will only. Do, that's my thing, Dave. I will only do roles if I die mid sentence, or if I get to play a bad guy with an attitude so bad that he either must be on drugs or something is loose upstairs and must be on a high dose of lithium or something like that. It's right there in your contract. It says right there right boldly. There. Boldly, this is the character you must play. This is it. Must mid sentence must. Go. <laughs> well, I, I'll I give you that one for free, Dave. That I one was free. That was that was nice. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna save that for sure. But all of this is amazing. I mean, how did uh, 
how did this happen? Did you just stumble into this suddenly one day, or is this very calculated? I was walking down out? Sunset Boulevard and I stumbled over an acting career. Mm. No, uh, <laughs> Love no, you. um, I, I've been doing music for a long time and I've been doing art and uh, shooting a lot of videos with a lot of different directors and working with a lot of talented, talented people that when just like you and I, like if you and I were to, after this interview, we connect. If I were to ever say, hey, is there a cool dude that does great interviews with cool surfboards behind him? I'll be like, oh, gosh, Dave, I know Dave. Let me give him a call. You know, it's just like that. Like these directors that I work with, people ask around in Hollywood and they're looking for certain actors. And But the fun, fun thing was is that I'm a singer first. So, you know, a lot of the actor in the acting community, they're like, oh, he's a singer. He's in a band. He thinks he can Jared Leto his way through life, <laughs> you know, which is, is you know, kind of true. <laughs> hey. But, you know, they give me a chance and then I, I come prepared and I, I work on it and I, I do a good job. And next thing you know, I'm doing another one. So I'm just grateful to be a part of that scene and to have those connections and to, to just be uh, living humbly and in gratitude in every opportunity that I get accept it with respect and work hard at it. And, you know, it's that kind of great attitude that will uh, certainly bring more of these opportunities to you. Right. See, you know, look at that. You, what is it? What is it, Dave? Uh, uh, you can attract people with honey better than uh, than fleas on Maybe. on crap or something like that. I, I believe know. that's the, I believe that is the, uh, the old that thing. is the term. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <that> is it. <laughs> Again, with acting and your music. A lot of your music videos are, are rather cinematic, especially, I think, the video for Spinning the Truth Around. Oh, yeah. There are locales there that look very familiar mm. from, from films people might recognize. What's I, in the box? Exactly. What's in the box? Yes, that closing no! scene. No! I get the feeling at some point in that video, you were wearing a snakeskin jacket that represents your uh, personal uh, individuality. Oh my gosh, you are good, Dave. You are good. I love Nicholas, that jacket. Little Nicholas Cage action, you know. Little yeah. Nicholas Cage wild at heart action. I'm not scared. I'm I'm not sad. Yeah, no, I love that jacket, and the video is really great that way. It works like a film. Not that the song doesn't pull you in enough, but yeah. the song in the context of that video is so wildly engaging. So nice work oh. there. That's very kind of you, man. I, I really enjoyed Zach Merck is quite the director. He's done three of our, four of our videos. Uh, I Hope You're Happy, which was stunning too. He did uh, uh, Into the Ocean, which was number one on VH1 in 2007 wow. um, and MTV. And he did Daylight. And then now he does this one. It's just, I always know what I'm going to get with that guy. It's going to be perfection. It's going to be perfect. You're absolutely right. Perfection it was. Thank you, Dave. Oh, please. Love Let's get, and speaking of the album. Yeah. I mean, aside from the fact that I, I need to ask you why there's part one and part two, but let's just go with part one since that's what we're dealing with right now. Where's this album coming from? From you and the band? How do they connect? It's basically when the music business was shut down, just like everybody was shut down for a while. I just said to my engineer and co-producer to Eric I said hey let's get together and let's write a song every day and so we started right we wrote like 80 ideas during COVID and just kept going because I was like this is where bands young bands that are signed are going to fall off they're going to get dropped labels are going to get cut cut ties and I own the label uh, and we run our own independent label out of Texas here so I said why don't we just overdo it and write and write and write and work our asses off during this time so that when the floodgates open again, we just, we're off to the races and we're ahead of everybody. So that's what we did. And they're just powerful, eclectic, beautiful, romantic songs about relationships and the struggles that people go through. And I've always been a sad boy, Dave. I don't know if you can tell, but I've always been a sad boy. <laughs> I've heard these and, stories. Uh, yeah. And so I, I like romantic, sad music. And that's, I lived on The Cure and The Smiths and Joy Division growing up. And that's, and Peter Gabriel. So I, we just started writing and writing and writing. And we have probably four albums worth, but we only want to put two albums out first then tour for it for a while. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to have uh, that full body of work waiting we like the release. full body dave yes the full body the full body of work yeah, it's amazing i mean you know <laughs> thanks for the wink there it's yeah. fantastic that you have this wealth of work 
in the wings, just waiting. I tend to put music in front of everything, including both of my ex-wives. Uh, and so it's like, you know, it's, it's my one love that I find comfort in and peace in. And it's amazing how much music just fills my heart and soul with, with just, ah, oh, I can't explain it. I really yeah. can't explain it. For you, maybe it's like catching the best wave of your life and you never want it to end. You never want it. that to end. So once I'm done with one song, I have to start on another one. And then next Excuse thing you me. know, you've got thousands of songs or thousands of waves that you just never want to get off of. So music is the longest relationship you've been able to sustain. Yeah, and I'm the happiest I've ever been. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, I love life. It's like, I mean, like for real, it's... It's like for you catching that long wave and just going on it, man. It's just like, wow, does it ever end? Doesn't uh, have to. And you can make a job out of it. I know, right? Wow. That's the beauty. My goal is to surf and cash checks. I haven't quite got there yet, but I'm working on it. <sighs> Dude, that's a great name for an album. Surf and cash checks. <laughs> <laughs> cash checks and catch checks. Oh, Sorry. there we go. That's part bad. two. They're going to cut me off. Now I'm canceled. Oh, shit. Oh, dude, it's over with. Just that quickly. <laughs> just that quickly. Ah, well, you know, speaking of the title track of uh, Spinning the Truth Around, let's go ahead and, uh, and listen to some of that right now. Uh, you can just imagine in your mind while you're listening to this a scene where there could be a head in a box and someone wearing a snakeskin jacket. And uh, we'll come back in moments because another element we always introduce here on the Kiss Kiss Bang Bang New Music Files is the role radio plays in working with an artist and lifting them up for everybody. But first, here's a taste of Spinning the Truth Around on the Kiss Kiss Bang Bang New Music Files. Driving home, the radio on, got tuned to the loneliest station I know, getting low. Where we go wrong, and don't you see? I feel the autumn chill with the top down sinking in a robot of ill driving home. Yeah. Where we go wrong? So I bend a little How do we climb back up from here? Give a little Can we get it all? Yeah, we've been through this before I don't want change We both want more I'll give it a minute Stay close by taste for you of spinning the truth around on the kiss kiss bang bang new music files and so now we're bringing in the radio element of this game and andy hawk is coming in from kkdo in sacramento andy thanks for joining us dave it's awesome to be on with with you and justin great to see you the, the thing is that the three of us have uh, an individual connectivity and, and history together. You and I, Andy, have worked in radio at various locations for years and years. I was a I was a I was a, a, a young kid in radio making terrible mistakes in my life. And somehow Dave did not fire me. So <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, I, I was able to make those mistakes and then eventually grow up. So I, and I, I owe Dave up a lot. You have. The beautiful thing is, Justin and I were noticing that as much as you've grown up, Andy, you're still wearing the hair you wore when you were 19. Absolutely. Yeah. And you look better now, bro. You look better now. <laughs> well, like, I, I think that's very nice of you to say, Justin. <laughs> um, Come on. But yeah, I mean, it, it, it is a fun story. Uh, I Jacoby Shaddix of Papa Roach inspired me to uh, redo the hair like in the younger rock and roll days. So I was, Go back to the glory I, days. Yeah, I, I saw him and, you know, we're about the same age. And I was like, dude, your hair is so cool. And we go to like the same hairstylist. I think, how come mine doesn't look like yours? He's like, you just got to go for it, bro. You've got, you're never too old, man. Just do it. He's such a nice guy, man. I asked my kids if they thought it would be cool. One of them said yes. One of them said no. That was all I needed. Do it. Daddy's coming home looking bleached and ready to roll. Although actually the, the, the daughter, and this is, I'll, I'll try to do this real quickly. The daughter who told me no also reminded me as I was telling her about my day this morning as we're all getting ready, leaving the house. And I said, oh, I'm going to be on this podcast with Justin from Blue October. And, she's, and she said, well, tell Justin I said hi. And I can't wait till he plays the show for us. And I yes. said, well, what, what do you mean the show for us? And she goes, dad, 
the last time we when we met Justin from Blue October, he said he was going to play our graduation. And I don't think he would lie to me. <laughs> oh, 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 man. Because I remember that. Yeah, we got it. We got it. I doubt she's going to want me to play her grad. They'll be like, what's that 46-year-old dude doing there, man? Why are you playing at graduation, bro? Well, I mean, she's only 11 now, so she's got a few years to go. So in oh, so seven I'll be years. Dead by the time she, yeah, I'll be dead. That's great. So, Hawk, tell us how uh, this whole game came into play with you and radio and uh, in Blue October. Well, you know, I feel like I kind of re- met blue october in 2018 obviously we all played the record 2006 2008 with those early hits but i really think it was i was working with a longtime friend of justin's uh vince richards which he worked with you know as a texas programmer forever when the happy record came out you know vince was very much like you know a list of things to do he's like you got to hear the song you got to hear the song he's like you just you just we're, we're gonna end up playing this and i was like really we're gonna end up playing it popped it in i was like okay well that that is different than i expected it would be and it's interesting because a lot of bands don't really have long careers on the radio because i don't think everyone necessarily evolves with what's going on in music and if you really look at what happened in alternative radio between like 2009 and 2014 the radio really changed right where alternative rock radio a little bit of the rock I would say came out of it and we really started, you know, the EDM happened. You had all the kind of acoustic folky, you know, maybe radio speak triple A bands kind of really getting a, a hold of alternative radio. And I, I guess, Justin, for you, like hearing, uh, I was hearing what you're talking before about your influences from all those amazing eighties artists and Peter Gabriel, you know, when I, when I heard happy in 2018, all those influences you just said, like completely make sense was it easier for you like to write songs like that because it's what you were into as a kid, let alone the kind of the rock stuff that you were playing in 2006 and 2008? You know, what's crazy is when we were with Universal in 2006 and 2008, I found it harder because I wasn't very much of like, oh, but that's what was selling at the time. Sure. So Absolutely. all of my romantic art rock had to be, transposed into drop D guitars and heavy drums and heavy singing to meet what was on the radio at that time, um, which was cool with me because, I mean, I got to hang out with Papa Roach, Corn, Limb Biscuit, and freaking Perfect Circle and all the and Stone Dibble Pilots, got to play shows with all those dudes, but it wasn't what was in my heart. I always loved rock, but I liked sad core rock and more like an 80s Cure Smiths dark joy wave kind of thing, joy division kind of thing, uh, midnight oil kind of stuff like that. And, uh, and so when now I'm able to make whatever I want to make, it comes out more eclectic and weird, uh, more of a Tyler, the creator meets, you know, uh, 80s synth pop meets, you know, uh, Peter Gabriel. So I find it more eclectic and more easy to write this way because there are no rules, but in 2006 and 2007, you have one type of music that was selling big records and that was the big rock. And so of course, Universal said, where are the drop D big power chords? And I said, oh, like this, wrong, wrong. And they're like, there we go. Now put it on the radio. Well, and like all joking aside, that stuff is fun to play, right? It's it fun, all to it's Come on. fun. It's right? fun to go to a right. concert and rock out and lose your mind. Dude, so I still I think, do that. I yeah. still do it because I fell in love with it. What happened was I was a slow core boy who all of a sudden got to hang out with Scott Whelan and Jonathan Davis. And I was like, oh my God, now I'm a rocker. And so now I combine the, the two and I'm able to write them both. And I, and I've, I respect people like Jacoby and uh, all those guys because they really taught me how to do it because I was just this little synth pop new waver. And they really took me under their wing and said, nah, man, that song freaking hate me, it got me, bro, you know, and, and, uh, and we all connected on our songs and, and I, I watched them do it and I, I watched them move. And next thing you know, I was playing Summerfest and Rockfest with all these big rock bands. And I was like, I'm a rocker. So now I can do both sides. So now on all our albums, I have heavy rock songs and then I've got whatever the radio needs me to sound like I can do it because I love it. 
I love it all. Was there a moment for you when when music did kind of change that period we were talking before where like you, holy crap, I could go play this 80s style, you know, or, you know, just more experimental side. Yeah, there was a there was a part, man, Andy, where where things got weird in alternative (laughs) music. And it was right after 2007 going into 2008, where all of a sudden you had like almost like this punk pop emo bands. You know, you have like the My Chemical Romance, you've got the uh, Panic at the Discos, who have all these crazy time signatures and weird vocals and, you know, really (laughs) weird stuff that I was like, where I couldn't even wrap my head around it, Andy. And that's how out of the loop I was for a second. I think it was also because that was the time when I was going through rehab and I was trying to get sober. So I was already lost, like my sense of who I was. And then I see all these young cats come in with this completely different style and just snuck me out of the freaking way. And I was like, what happened? Power chords are no longer cool. What the hell happened? And then I went, got sober, took two or three years off, came back. And that's right when synth pop and EDM and kind of that Capital Cities, remember that song? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Still play it. You know, it's a great freaking song. MGMT, all those people came in and I was like, okay, now we're in my backyard. Now I'm going to party with these motherfuckers and I'm going to have a great freaking time at it. So then I went and made albums, you know, like I Hope You're Happy and uh, and and Oh My My and things like that that were just more of like beat driven and vibe driven and uh, and then tried to put my sad lyrics behind it, which always work. Yeah. Exactly. And I, and I think that was a, I mean, for me in 2018, you know, the hard thing any, any radio programmer will tell you is music is so fractured. There's a thousand different niches that you could try and dive into if you really did. Like we're always worried, oh, you got to put this song on the radio. It's got, it's got 20 million streams a week and you listen to it and it's like, yeah, but we're trying to bring people together. I don't know if that's totally. a and so I think what was really great in 2018, when you returned to the radio, it was like Blue October fans will listen to the radio and they will buy a concert ticket. And yeah. you guys on that, when that record came out, you played City of Trees that year, our big festival here in Sacramento. And it was a sold out show with Odessa, I think was the headliner. And we had Dirty Heads on there in and, churches. And all and these lovely different the band, genres. Lovely the band was there too. And they're like great friends of mine. And so it yep. was great. And it was cool because a lot of people were there to see you guys and were probably not there for churches in Odessa and they had a great time, but there was also this crowd of young kids who was like, I didn't never heard of blue October before and saw you guys out, you know, rocking out, having a great time, you know, feeling the heat that day. And it kind of brought everything together. It was rock. It was electronic. It was dance. And and it completely works. So it's one of those things I've told other radio people. It's like, hey, listen, Blue October fans will care about you if you care about them. Like they will listen to the radio and they will come to your show. It's true. So there's, don't be scared to be in the Blue October business. Yeah, it's, <laughs> there you it's, go. More a, it's more of a face-to-face kind of connection with our fans. Uh, you can look at stream numbers and you can see what's hot on other things. And But when you... I just love the fact that I love being face to face with fans. I love doing uh fan on uh that sounds so weird. Fan on fan. No, I just love doing <laughs> promotions. I love doing things where I get to connect with these people and say thank you so much for supporting the station, for supporting our music and it's just a great connection that we have and it's it's pretty freaking cool. That whole thing in 2010, I didn't know what was going on with rock and roll, bro. I was like, I don't even know how to wrap my mind around this panic at the disco stuff. How can that guy sing so high? Why is he so cool? Damn him. Well, I I was going to say, and now I'm excited to see you on the big screen. Like, I I cannot wait to see you as a bad guy. Right? Uh, Those panic at the disco guys are not doing that. Yeah, you wait. You wait. (laughs) I'm just going to get shot mid sit. Perfect. It's in the contract. It's in the contract. (laughs) Hey, uh, I'm going to play a a clip of another song here off the album, and it's called uh, Where Did You Go? I'm Less of a Mess These Days. And after we listen to a taste of that, we're going to come back and talk about that video. Okay. All right. Justin's with us from Blue October, along with Andy Hawk from KKDO in Sacramento on the Kiss Kiss Bang Bang new record.
Music files, whatever we're called. Downtown with my baby on a Saturday night. Push start the car, but the feeling was right. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. You live next to the club down on Montrose Street. We can listen to the pixies from your bedroom suite. Uh huh. We are back on the Kiss Kiss Bang Bang New Music Files after uh, sampling a little there of another song from Blue October off the new album entitled Spinning the Truth Around Volume 1 or Part 1, actually. And the song we just heard is Where Did You Go? I'm Less of a Mess These Days. Mm. And uh, Justin, I have to say that aside from the song, going back again to a video, this video surprised me endlessly. It is for a Blue October video, may I say it's uh zany perhaps wacky yeah i am it definitely is that was a trip to walmart at 7 a.m single camera (laughs) shot endlessly running the whole time yeah it was an iphone it was literally an iphone and my friend emily was pushing the cart and i said hey you know i need a video for this song because our song's coming out tomorrow and i need you to hold the camera and you just follow me okay let's do this so we did it one shot and then wow. rocked it. It was fun, man. Just one that's take. That's a great video. That's really cool. That's Thank a you, buddy. Shot. It's just one shot iPhone. I said, just hold on as I push the cart. And it was just fun. It was interactive. So she's, she's in the cart? She's standing at the end of the cart okay. holding it with one hand <laughs> in my iPhone. Here at Up Down Records, we make videos whether there's a budget or not. How about bravo, that? Bravo, bravo. Yes, good slogan. <laughs> work with the budget (laughs) man you guys are hitting the road in like five or six days you're taking off yeah it's going to be extensive you're doing like oh uh, 30 some stops yeah we're basically we went on the road with the goo goo dolls and we're going to steal all of their crowds so we're going back to the places we play with them and capitalizing on it as much as we possibly can before people forget about us fantastic strategy good work again always thank you always thinking always thinking oh man i hate to say it but we're out of time because this has been such a great time again uh justin from blue october thanks so much for joining us today and giving us the inside uh scoop the bird's eye low down on the caper of what's going on musically with you guys as well as making movies thank you (laughs) andy always great to see you buddy up there in beautiful sacramento (laughs) thanks guys looking super hot with your hair oh man i just want to hold you bro big spoon i call big spoon damn it (laughs) i'm never i'm never going to get to ride with you because you'll always call shotgun before i even get a chance to (laughs) all right that's going to do it for us uh, thanks again, you guys, for joining us on the Kiss Kiss Bang Bang New Music Files. Love you guys. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Andy. I'll see you soon, baby. I'm your host, Dead Air Dave, and I'll catch you next time with more inside info about new music being made on the Kiss Kiss Bang Bang New Music Files, powered by Osiris Media. Our theme song is written and performed by Los Angeles band Love Ghost. <laughs> like yeah? I was saying, I like to take my clothes off for a certain amount of money. Sure. Anyway. And then, you know, whatever makes a buck these days, it's a tough yeah. business.